inside America's boardrooms. The informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of virtual-only shareholder meetings. Um, but before I do that, I want to first tell our audience that uh, if the surroundings look new to you, um, I'm happy to say that um, we are now going to be filming our shows at the Conference Board Studios. And interestingly enough, my guest today is Doug Cha, who is the Executive Director of the Conference Board Governance Center. And uh, Doug, we've known each other for a long time. Yep. And uh, I can't thank you and the Conference Board enough for being our new home for Inside America's Boardrooms. No, I, we are very excited about the opportunity uh, for this partnership, and I think it'll be, it'll be great. We'll have a lot, of, a lot of fun with it. Well, one of the reasons that I'm excited is, um, again, you have a storied background in this space and in governance, and uh, that gives me somebody to tackle tough issues with. <laughs> And this is an interesting, if not tough, issue, okay? Yes. So in the virtual uh, only shareholder meetings, obviously the technology lent itself to be able to do this. And I think on first pass, uh, you know, all the technology um, people said, we can do, you know, a virtual only board meeting sure. and save money and maybe build up the retail participation. Well, uh, when they started, uh, we saw um, a unexpected, or maybe it was expected, but for me, I, I hadn't pre-thought that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're seeing uh, a situation where a lot of investors are very upset about this virtual only, I'm not having the opportunity to attend. And so, um, all of a sudden, you know, we're not surprised by the technology offering it, but here we are in a very difficult situation. So what's your take? on the pros and cons of the of the virtual only shareholder meeting well i think that you know uh, the the pros and cons are are pretty obvious and they've been kind of hashed out in public um, in terms of the you know the hubbub around this or the the reason that people are you know having uh, objections uh, you know i think with like with a lot of things in corporate governance people you know some folks are very skeptical or very you know suspicious about corporate motives um, and um, and you know and and others are kind of yeah they're they're looking at the worst case scenario for the worst actors out there um, and so those with the big concerns about you know specifically about management and boards using this to shut down dissent or really just, you know, kind of shield themselves from criticism, further entrench themselves. First of all, I, you know, I don't think we've seen any evidence of that be in terms of the, the, the technology being used that way. Uh, and if there is, it, you know, the, 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 the instances are probably few and far between. It's kind of like when management decides to have the annual meeting in some very, very remote place. There are plenty of, there are stories about it, but of the thousands of annual meetings that take place around the country every year, it's, you know, virtually not the case. So, you know, I think this is one of those, uh, you know, maybe give it a chance and not be so super suspicious the minute you hear about it. And let's, you know, let's see what this, let's see how this actually plays out before killing the idea. Yeah, it seems like there has to be um, um, a solution within the technology to take away this lack of shareholder participation, meaning, you know, being able to submit, que you know, questions or somehow to, to deal with that. Uh, yet, 
I only, again, may, and maybe this is just the media part of this, you know, uh, taking the outliers, but I haven't heard, uh, and I'm sure there are some outliers. I'm sure that while you couldn't name them, I'm sure there's people that have taken advantage of this technology to say, hey, it's been a crappy year, let's, let's try and do that. But, you know, I, I would believe that anybody any corporate secretary or any investor relations person that's sitting out there is not trying to alienate the investor. They're trying to find ways to make this better. And that goes to your point that that's the majority of the people. Yeah, I, I think that for like, I think everybody would agree that most corporations and executives, they're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to run their business well um, and for the benefit of their stakeholders. And yeah, there are going to be some bad actors out there, um, but you know the problem is those bad actors are the ones that get the most attention and really create this mistrust of corporate America that you know we've seen building over the years. Um, so it's unfortunate that uh, you know it draws such a strong reaction. Yeah, well, we both I think feel that way. But let's look at what may be reality here. Yeah. Okay, and that is. You have groups that are really, you know, one might say this is going to be a tough row uh, for anybody that wants to do a shareholder only now because you have groups like uh, Scott um, Stringer's uh, Board Accountability 2.0. Uh, they say they're going to vote against anybody that does the shareholder, vir or, yeah, I'm sorry, virtual only shareholder meetings. Um, and we've seen that they've been successful with proxy access. I guess the real question in that is, do they get any support? And if they get support, at least one person's opinion, if they get support from somebody like a BlackRock or a State Street or a Vanguard, I think that, that the same thing that's happened with proxy access, I think you're going to find that shareholder-only meetings, to, either you find a solution for the shareholders or, or they're going to diminish rather than increase. Well, I, I think that, you know, it was true that um, uh, the, the New York City Comptroller's Office has had a lot of success with some of their campaigns lately. I don't see this being kind of resonating as much as proxy access did. Proxy access, you know, was somewhat political. It was something that was actually adopted into law by Dodd-Frank, and then it was, you know, basically nullified by the courts. So they had some momentum and some, you know, moral high ground, if you will, on that issue. And they were really able to portray this as a shareholder right. Now, in terms of whether that, you know, really is a shareholder right, that's a topic for a different uh, webcast. But, you know, by doing that, they were able to get support of some of the other large investors. On the virtual shareholder meeting, at least at this point, I don't hear much of a groundswell from the largest investors about this, uh, you know, ISS and Glass Lewis have not decided how they are going to treat this, and so I don't think the the largest uh, index funds are really, you know, looking at virtual shareholder meeting as kind of a make or break type of issue in terms of how they're going to vote for directors. So. Even if New York State started to vote against directors on this, I don't think that's going to make a meaningful dent for most boards to actually, you know, do anything. I mean, the, the companies that are going to do it mostly are probably going to be the smaller companies of which New York City probably doesn't own significant enough stock to really to, to move the needle. Yeah. Well, we'll have to watch this season, see if the numbers are ticking up, you know, in the way of, of virtual only, or uh, whether solutions, again, maybe solutions are found. But um, uh, one way or the other, I guess we'll have to wait and see and see what kind of support, you know, this issue gets. Yeah. So, well, listen, thank you for taking the time. Sure. This was, I just want to warn you, this is relatively easy compared to <laughs> some of the stuff that I'm prepared to ask you about. But I, again, want to thank you for being our host um, going forward. Thank you. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week here from the conference board um, to take on any issue that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. 
brought to you with Knowledge Partners, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.